Well, <clears throat> in light of that ranting from Mr. Kirshner and understanding that he has a long history working in the Department of Justice, I could understand why we're in the mess that we're in. We now have the details on what the DOJ is required by law to do and its intentional violation of the law and the impact that this has had on DOJ employees in the form of the loss of the ability to earn a living and having their lives destroyed. I want to take a step back and ask the question, why did they do it? I suppose for the same kind of reasons that Mr. Kirchner was just outlining because they have some obsession of something that is actually not real. But they also didn't just violate the law for the sake of violating the law. They did so with the explicit intent of targeting certain a certain class of employees, and in this instance, those they perceived to be conservatives. One whistleblower stated, quote, that if an FBI employee fit a certain profile as a political conservative, they were viewed as security concerns and unworthy to work at the FBI. I assume Mr. Kirshner has the same viewpoint. Mr. Allen, does a person's political beliefs and most specifically holding conservative views disqualify someone from serving in the FBI? No, ma'am, they do not. Well, then, based on your experience as an FBI veteran and target of the DOJ's unlawful acts, why do you think this political purity campaign is ongoing inside the FBI? I, I'm not fully aware of why they're getting rid of people uh, with more conservative views or potentially not wanting people to, to speak out in a, at this time, ma'am. Well, and I think your testimony is that they also are trying to get rid of anyone who holds Christian values and Christian beliefs. Is that your experience as well? That is my experience, especially when you see the comments that were leveled against me in the uh, findings during the investigation. So we have the gentleman sitting next to you ranting and raving about uh, this Project 2025. I doubt that he really understands anything about it, but ranting and raving about that. But doesn't seem to be at all bothered by the fact that you were targeted because you were a conservative and a Christian. Do you find that odd? I do find it a bit surprising. We shouldn't be targeting groups of people within our organizations because of firmly held belief or any kind of political standpoint. And Mr. Lovett, beside uh, the violation of whistleblower protection laws, the FBI is also, for example, using First Amendment protected speech and activity which occurs outside of work to punish its employees. Were the officials involved in this unlawful conduct, such as Acting Assistant Section Chief Dina Perkins and Assistant Deputy, Deputy Assistant Director Jeffrey Veltry, punished or in any way held accountable for their violation of employees' First Amendment rights? Not that I'm aware of. I know Ms. Perkins is still in the same position, and Mr. Veltry received a promotion to the fifth largest FBI office in the country, the Miami Field Office. I do, according to whistleblowers, that promotion was delayed because he was under investigation for whistleblower retaliation, but that wasn't for uh, the targeting of individuals for their First Amendment views. Okay, so in this administration, and they, again, while ranting about Project 2025, in this administration, you can actually violate employees' First Amendment rights and get promoted? Is that what your testimony is? I don't know why the FBI didn't look at this closer, because, again, it's clear that there was a widespread understanding that these were issues being looked at, that these were the considerations. And I know Mr. Horowitz has, has talked about them not, not exclusively only targeting conservatives, but all of the individuals that have come to us from these various whistleblowers, there's one counterexample of somebody who wasn't conservative. All the others that we've seen, there was a clear focus on these individuals' vaccination status, their First Amendment views, their political stances, and, and that seems to have gone, you know, been, been accepted by leadership of the FBI. Boy, the FBI has really been weaponized against not only the American public, but its own employees, hasn't it? It's, it's sad. The, the term weaponization obviously can be, mean a lot of things to a lot of people, but when you see the direct impact on someone's life, like Marcus and his family, to go 27 months without pay, as of today, he still has not received the 27 months of back pay that the FBI committed to give him. Um, similarly for Garrett O'Boyle, the amount of time they've gone, I think 23 months at this point, it, it truly has ruined their lives. Well, what does this actually say about the Department of Justice and FBI uh, in, in their interest in actually righting the wrongdoing and the unlawful acts that they've engaged in? 
it's hard to make those kinds of sweeping conclusions, but I definitely would say that the, the way that you help keep people, you know, you help them abide by good things by having good laws in place. And I, I firmly believe there need to be stronger laws to help prevent this kind of thing in the future. There have to be changes to protect FBI whistleblowers, no matter what administration or what political party is in power. Well, and I would agree with that. And Mr. Allen, I'm sorry for what the federal government did to you. I think it's an absolute crime against humanity the way that you were treated. I respect your faith, respect your, your, um, your loyalty to this country, and we all recognize that what the FBI did was wrong. We thank you for being here, and with that, I yield back. Mr. Chairman.